If you're planning to shoot nightscapes or astrophotography with the Nikon Z8 or the Z9, there are five settings you'll want to ensure are turned off so that you can get the best possible images. Using my nightscape photography experience and knowledge of the Z8 and Z9 settings, I've compiled a list of five settings to be turned off as well as the details to answer why. The first item that you'll want to make sure is turned off is long exposure noise reduction. For long exposure noise reduction, you'll go look for the item called long exposure noise reduction and you want to make sure that that's off. So the reason you'll want to turn this off is because more than likely your exposures are going to be longer than one second. And what this setting does is it tries to reduce your noise from that long exposure photo. However, this is something that you're just going to work through anyways when you get into post-processing. So it's better to have the original file available to you to work with. Additionally, when you have this option turned on, let's say you're taking a photo with a 15 second exposure. When the noise reduction is turned on for long exposure, it's actually gonna take an additional 15 seconds to process that image after it was taken. So now it's gonna take you 30 seconds per photo. And the problem with that is, is it won't allow you to take your next photo until that is complete. So this also helps speed up your time in the field whenever you're trying to take a lot of exposures. Very similar to this, the Z8 and the Z9 also have a high ISO noise reduction mode that can be turned on. For high ISO noise reduction, you'll want to go to the option titled high ISO noise reduction and turn that to off as well. Again, this works in the same way, except that it gets turned on whenever you're shooting at high ISOs. So for me, for example, I typically shoot my Milky Way photos at 10,000 ISO. I don't want this turned on because again, I'm taking lots of photos so that I can stack them together and let photo processing software clean up that noise. The one difference to be aware of though is with the high ISO noise reduction setting turned on, it doesn't take any amount of time for that processing to happen like it does with the long exposure noise reduction. But just be aware, this is gonna go look for hot pixels and try to clean up your image. And one item that could get cleaned up out of it are stars, and the same goes for long exposure noise reduction. So if you've made it this far into the video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button down below. For one, that helps me grow my subscriber base and will help me reach a goal of getting monetized within YouTube. So I can't express enough how much a subscription means to me for the work that I put into this channel. Also, by subscribing, you'll be one of the first ones to know whenever my new content comes out in the future. Also, if you like this video and this type of content, please be sure to hit the like button down below so that I get that feedback. And be sure to stick around till the end of the video where I'll go through some image comparison from the different noise reduction settings. The third item that I recommend turning off is vibration reduction. For this one, you'll go to the photo shooting menu and you'll look for the item called vibration reduction and turn that to off. So within the Z8, there's two variants of this vibration reduction. There's one that could be applied by your lens if your lens has that capability. And there's also five axis stabilization for your sensor. So if you were to leave this on, there is the potential that you could get movement from the sensor if it detects any motion. And also if your lens has stabilization built into it, as this tries to continue to be stabilized. One thing to be aware of, if you go into the settings and you see vibration reduction grayed out, this is because your lens has a switch on it for turning stabilization on and off. So if that's the case, you'll wanna make sure that the switch on your lens is turned off. The next item that you'll want to have turned off is the safe focus position setting. This can be found in the setup menu under the option save focus position. So make sure that that's turned off. The reason that I like to have that turned off is that I found with most of the Nikon Z lenses so far, if you have that turned off, anytime you turn the camera back on, the lens will automatically go to infinity focus, which means you don't have to do any adjustment to your stars. However, I highly recommend testing that out with your camera and your lens combo, and always be sure to still take a double check that your stars are in focus. And the last item that you'll want to ensure is turned off is autofocus. So you want to make sure that your camera is set to manual focus because your camera is not going to be able to automatically focus on the stars as it is anyways. So once you dial in your focus using your focus ring, by ensuring that your camera is actually switched into manual focus mode, either in the settings, if your lens doesn't have a switch, or by using the switch on the side of your lens, you'll ensure that you don't accidentally come out of focus by hitting the autofocus button. All right, so let's take a look at some test images that I did using long exposure noise reduction. So these first two, these are actually photos with no noise reduction done to them. So we'll zoom in. This one on the left is the JPEG. 
and the one on the right is the raw file. So you can already see just by looking at these two that there's a difference between the JPEG and the RAW file to begin with. So you can definitely see that this one is smoothed out just a little bit more because it's a JPEG. But let's go over to the one wherever we have logging exposure noise reduction turned on. And now we're looking at the JPEG over here with long exposure noise reduction turned on versus the one where it's not. And to be honest, I don't see a huge difference here. So again here, there's just not a huge difference in there. So for me, I can save 10 seconds per shot by just not turning this feature on. So let's take a look at the high ISO noise reduction. One thing that I do want to point out is that the high ISO noise reduction only affects the JPEG image if you're taking JPEG plus RAW. So the RAW image is never going to get that high ISO permanently applied to it. However, if you pull it into a tool like Nikon's NX software, you will see the effect take place. So let's take a look here. Uh, this JPEG on the left over here, this is the one that does not have any noise reduction applied to it. And I want to make sure I get the same star even though I was dealing with some clouds. Um, you can definitely see this image is cleaned up a lot. Um, so it's not a terrible thing, but again, whenever I'm shooting images for the night sky, I want the raw files. That way I can do all of the processing to my liking. And something that you'll notice here, I mean, it's, and it's possibly just a little hard to tell because of the clouds. I'll see if I can find a better example, like maybe over here. Um, there's absolutely some of these smaller, dimmer stars that are getting cleaned up by the high ISO noise reduction. So be aware of that, that you could end up losing some of your stars and losing some of the detail out of your night sky if you use this option. So let's take a look here at the raw file over here on the right. Obviously this one's a lot dirtier than the JPEG. Um, we'll go ahead and throw the JPEG in over here just for comparison. Um, and there's definitely a huge difference between these two photos. And then the last one that I wanna pull up here Let's take a look at having the high ISO noise reduction and the long exposure noise reduction on at the same time. All right, so the clouds were set up just a little bit different. Um, I think I had actually moved the camera for this, but we should still be able to see the differences. So with this one, you can definitely tell that it's cleaned up quite a bit more. You can almost see like the spider webby effect. Um, it reminds me a lot of when you pull the detail slider up high on your noise reduction slider in Lightroom. So that's definitely there. I'm almost positive it's cleaning up some of these lighter, dimmer stars. Um, this image over here on the left, this is gonna be the JPEG without any noise reduction added to it. And in fact, let's go to the raw file just so you can get a better idea. So now this is the raw file that has no noise reduction done to it. Um, so fairly significant difference here. And I'll throw in the image that has only had long exposure noise reduction done to it at this point, just because that high ISO noise reduction isn't gonna carry through with the raw file. So, slight difference there, uh, but not a whole lot. However, I'd still rather have this image over here on the left so that I can pull the details out that I want. So that wraps up the five items that I always check before I shoot astrophotography or nightscapes to ensure that they're in the off position. If you've got any other settings that you like to ensure off, please be sure to leave those down in the comment section below. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd smash the like button down below, as well as subscribe to the channel to help me grow my followers and to ensure that you're the first one to see my videos as they come out. As always, I appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next one.